Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today I want to talk a bit about 30 Super Carry. A lot of other people are talking about 30 Super Carry. I would like to think that I have a bit of a different perspective on this than some of the other commentators out there. So I have been saying for several years now that I would love to have a, a SIG P365 in 7.65 French long. Um, it, you may know that I kind of have a thing for 7.65 French. The original French pistols, especially the 1935A like this one, are beautiful pistols and really fun to shoot. And it was really fantastic that Starline started making brass and Steinel started making ammo for these, and you can actually shoot them now. And when I heard that uh, that Federal was introducing the 30 Super Carry and I got a glimpse at what that cartridge looked like, I was immediately very excited that they were reintroducing the 7.65 French Long. Uh, and in fact I went up to their guys at SHOT Show to ask them about it, and when I very excitedly started giggling on about 7.65 French I got a pretty much a blank stare. Uh, they didn't know what I was talking about, they frankly didn't really care. Uh, they were very nice about it, but they really obviously didn't care. Uh, they came up with this concept <laughs> independently of any historical references. Now what 30 Super Carry technically is, is actually a millimeter longer case than the French cartridge. It is a 0.312 inch bullet, so that's the same diameter as 32 ACP. It's also the same diameter as 327 Federal Magnum uh, revolver cartridge uh, by 21 millimeters overall length. The French and the Pedersen device were used a 20 millimeter long case. The 30 Super Carry is one millimeter longer, which is good because it's also substantially higher pressure. It's a 50,000 psi cartridge, which is kind of eye-poppingly high pressure for a subcompact pistol. Uh, but that extra length, extra millimeter of length, means that you can't accidentally chamber a very high pressure 30 Super Carry in your surplus army pistol that was not meant for anything nearly that high pressure. So that's a good thing. Now, I started this off by talking about a P365. Well, the fact of the matter is I essentially have that pistol now. It is a Smith & Wesson Shield Plus in 30 Super Carry. This is dimensionally almost identical to a P365. Um, it's slightly shorter in the slide and just slightly longer in the grip. And with the slightly extended magazine, which I like because it gives me a really good three finger grip on the gun, this gives me 16 plus one cartridges, 17 rounds that you can stuff into this thing, which is a really impressively large. So uh, before we go further, let's take a quick look at the ammunition itself and what the cartridge looks like. Thanks to Federal, I have two different versions of ammunition here to uh, tinker with today. We've got some of their HST jacketed hollow point defensive ammo, uh, and we've got some of their standard FMJ practice ammo. So that is what you're looking at. There is the flat nose FMJ practice version. Naturally, of course, I also have some 7.65 French long. So this is 1950s production, 1950 production, you can see. Um, it is steel case as it was at that time. Uh, this ammunition, by the way, in my experience is virtually all duds and hang fires. So I've had a lot of very helpful people point out where I can find this ammo for my French pistols and submachine gun, and I, I really appreciate the thought, but uh, I don't buy more of this ammo because it just doesn't work reliably. Putting those two rounds side by side, you can obviously see the similarity. Uh, the brass one here, a 30 Super Carry, is approximately one millimeter longer, substantially higher pressure, but otherwise essentially identical. Same bullet diameter. Uh, by the way, they went with 30 Super Carry for this, right there. Uh, despite the fact that it is a 0.312 inch bullet, technically that's the same diameter as 32 ACP. There's our defensive load. So why did they not call it 32 Super Carry? Well, I think it's actually a really clever decision on their part, because if you say 32 caliber pistol to someone in guns, they immediately think of that as, oh, 32, 32 ACP, underpowered, wimpy. Whereas the connotation that 30 caliber tends to take is 30 caliber battle rifle M14 G3 foul, much better than that puny 5.56 mouse gun, 30 strong. Uh, and so Federal, I'm pretty sure, deliberately went for the 30 caliber rifle 
association instead of the 32 caliber pistol association. Anyway, that's all just marketing. Of course the advantage there is your smaller diameter cartridge you're able to stack more into the same length of magazine. So it's approximately a 20% increase for 30 caliber. So where you get 5 rounds of 9 you get 6 rounds of 30. By the way, uh, Federal's original intent apparently was to make the 30 Super Carry an intermediary to, to bridge the gap between 380 and 9x19, but where they actually ended up when the cartridge is all said and done is a round that essentially matches 9mm performance and feel. And in fact, I had a chance to shoot uh, the, the Shield Plus in both 9 and 30 side by side at SHOT Show. So, 9mm. Do you need a palate cleanser? <laughs> what do we think? I cannot tell any discernible difference in felt recoil. Between 9 and Between 30. Nine and 30. Anyway, comparing this to 9mm here, you have basically the same overall length. That's why these fit in the same basic size of pistols. If someone makes a pistol, a subcompact 9mm with a locked breech, it will be pretty easy to uh, make that pistol in 30. Now one of the downsides compared to, say, the, the compatibility between 40 and 357 SIG, Unfortunately, the case heads are substantially different in size here, so you cannot simply swap barrels to change a 9 to a 30. Uh, that sort of conversion requires a new slide, well, it requires a new breech face, which essentially requires a new slide. The magazines have to be different, uh, because 30 caliber rounds will basically pop through the feed lips of a 9mm magazine. So this isn't such an easy conversion as, well, 556 to 300 blackout, for example. Uh, but the overall size is similar so that manu for manufacturers it's not that big a deal to swap, uh, you know, to build a 30 caliber version of a 9mm pistol. Couple pros, couple cons to this cartridge. Let's start with the pros, because they're more interesting to me. Uh, where do I think this cartridge is useful and will find a good home? Well the obvious starting place is the really subcompact carry pistols like exactly this sort of thing. Uh, there's, it's not accidental that this is one of the pistols that was first introduced along with the cartridge. 17 rounds in this thing is uh, it's a stupidly large number of cartridges. It was not very long ago that if you wanted a pistol this size it was going to be a single stack 9mm, it was going to have 7 or maybe 8 rounds in it, uh, and there were a lot of people I think who would say, well I'll carry that, but that's not that much ammunition, and I'll carry a spare magazine as well. And I think like one of the overlooked benefits of having 17 rounds already in this thing is there's really no need to carry a spare magazine if you were of the opinion that two magazines for your single stack gun was sufficient. And you get a couple of benefits as a result. One of them is you just don't have one extra thing that you have to deal with. Uh, and also the gun's going to be more reliable. You don't have to worry about doing a reload or running dry on ammunition if all of your two magazines are already essentially in the first magazine. It also means you don't have your spare magazine floating around in your pocket filling up with pocket lint. So that I think is a, a definite uh, place where this cartridge has, has a real place. Uh, secondly, I think it has a very interesting potential future in both PDWs and PCCs. I would say submachine guns, but I'm not sure there's that much developmental motive for new submachine guns. If there is, I think a 30 Super Carry submachine gun would be pretty darn cool. That's pretty much the Moss 38, which is a like a small, it's like a regular submachine gun, but smaller. Um, I think it would be really interesting to have something like a Ruger and Tomat USW in 30 Super Carry. This form factor of gun already uses extended magazines to begin with, because it's not meant to be concealed, so it doesn't matter if you've got a little extra magazine sticking out of the grip. Well, this is 21 rounds of 9mm. The 30 Super Carry you're getting 20% more, so that's going to turn this into 25, maybe 26 rounds. And if we really want to get into it with like full-size PCC magazines, 
then this is sort of the comparison that you're looking at. Uh, this is a MOS 38 magazine in 7.65 French, which is dimensionally essentially identical to 30 Super Carry. That's a 9mm magazine. These two have the same capacity. So if I took this one and rebuilt it for 30 Super Carry, I'm going to be getting 36, 37 rounds. That starts to be a pretty substantial increase. That's kind of like taking every one of your standard AR-15 PCC mags and throwing a major extended base plate on it. Except it's not actually physically longer. It's the same length mag, you're just getting 20% more cartridges. There is, I think there is some question of how many rounds do you really need to have in a subcompact pistol? At what point do you have enough that lowering, potentially lowering the effectiveness of the cartridge in order to get more isn't really a good trade-off? In a 9mm PCC, I think the calculus on that decision is rather different. Now of course this is going to be subject to approval of 30 Super Carry as a competition cartridge. That's where we see PCCs getting a lot of their use. Uh, and as rules currently stand in a lot of the competition uh, venues, 9mm is specified as the minimum cartridge. So you can't use a 32, it has to be a 9 or a 38. It will be interesting to see if any of those competition organizations uh, change their rules to allow a cartridge like 30 Super Carry that would meet the requirements in terms of power factor, just not in terms of bullet diameter. Speaking of which, uh, cartridge power is something that a lot of people have brought up as a negative to 30 Super Carry. Essentially it gets you the same terminal effectiveness as 9 Parabellum. There's certainly going to be some debate on that, I know already. but within practical terms, if we're not trying to count every individual foot-pound and millimeter of expansion, you're basically getting the same thing. There are going to be 9mm loads that will be more effective, but you can reach that same baseline of, of terminal effectiveness with 30 Super Carry. That was basically the intent of the cartridge, uh, and that's why the pressure has been increased. And the, the increased pressure is to make sure that uh, a relatively high velocity can be achieved from a relatively short barrel in order to get terminal effectiveness that matches 9mm. In fact, it would be interesting to see some experimentation done on effectiveness of both cartridges out of particularly short barrels, because a lot of this stuff is done with a 4 or a 5 inch test barrel. And I'd like to see it with a 2 or 3 inch barrel, because some of those 9mm loadings that look good on paper out of 4 or 5 inches kind of drop off with a much shorter, uh, much shorter barrel. The 30 Super Carry, with its substantially higher chamber pressure, we're talking 50,000 psi rated pressure, um, it might not drop off quite so much. I don't know, I haven't seen the data and I haven't done that experimenting myself. My own personal opinion is that the numbers I see on 30 Super Carry are perfectly adequate. Uh, I'm not one of those people who thinks 9mm Parabellum is the absolute bare minimum of acceptable terminal performance. I think 9 is just fine. And if I have a 30 Super Carry load that's 5 or even 10% less, that's still just fine. Especially if I'm getting 20% more ammunition in exchange for it. There is a matter of cartridge cost. Federal plans on the cartridge costing the same amount as 380 ACP. This is of course more than 9 Parabellum. Pretty much everything is always going to be more than 9 Parabellum because of economy of scale. I see people suggesting that that's a big deal, because you need to be firing many thousands of rounds per year to uh, maintain proper proficiency with your carry gun. Is that a good idea? Yeah, of course. Um, the more you shoot, the more proficient you are with the gun, the better. There's a, a certain level of proficiency below which it's really kind of irresponsible to be carrying around a gun and planning to use it. Um, but at the same time, I think the number of people who actually do put multiple thousands of rounds per year through their carry pistols is actually pretty darn small. The vast majority of people are going to be buying a couple boxes a year, plinking with it a couple times, and mostly sticking it in a sock drawer or in a holster. Uh, and for those people the difference in cost of ammunition really isn't that big of a deal. So I think ammo cost issues are a bit overhyped by people. Um, especially people who tend to be really hardcore shooters who are, are going to be shooting many thousands of rounds, unlike I think a lot of the people who are going to be actually buying this. Let's see how this actually shoots. I should point out, by the way, that 
this very same day today, James Reeves over at TFB TV is also posting a video on the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus in 30 Super Carry. His video is largely a review of the pistol itself. So if you're really interested in the details of this particular pistol, you should definitely check out his video. I'm more interested in the cartridge myself, but we, of course, have to do some shooting. So let's see how this handles. I'm at about 10 to 15 yards here. A couple mini silhouettes. I mean, I can't really find much to complain about with that. Uh, and I got 13 rounds in this thing instead of the typical 10, maybe 12 that you would get, 12 with an extended magazine. Um, if I drop the extended magazine in, I got 16 plus one in the chamber if I want it. To me, that's the really cool part. So here's one way to assess the stopping power, so to speak, of 30 Super Carry. Let's see if it can run a spinner. Uh, with 9mm Parabellum out of my P365, I can do this in 10 or 11 rounds. Well, I've got 16 here. Let's see if I can pull it off. So, I wasted a couple of shots at the top. I should know better than to try and force it at the top. But regardless, even though I dumped three or four extras at it, and I was empty at the end, clean the spinner. If 30 super carries underpowered, it's not that much underpowered. I should also add on here, I've become a huge fan of red dots on pistols. They give you, I mean, all the same advantages you get with red dots on rifles. And the technology is good enough now that pistol red dots are perfectly capable of, with, of withstanding the impact and the forces of being mounted on pistol slides. And I think especially on little tiny pistols like these, where you have a short sight radius to begin with, the advantages of a red dot are really fantastic. So uh, I went ahead and put a little micro uh, Swamp Fox on this one. It's one of the budget uh, red dots and it's worked great for me. Real happy with it. Got 16 more rounds of this because these magazines just like never end. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.